Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right, welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I'm Coach David Syverson. I'm here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. Uh, we have an interesting topic today. It's interesting to me because I've been wanting to do this for over a year. Uh, and I've had like four different outlines, three different outlines, and I erased this, and I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> I'm just, just going to wing it. Um, and by wing it, I mean I just want to put this out there because I think it's really important, and I think it's under-talked about, and I think it's the root of a lot of problems that athletes, coaches, and communities have, um, and people in general. And it's about humility and CrossFit. And I want to make sure before we start, this is not going to be preachy, I'm going to try hard to. We get that sometimes, right? Um, this is not going to be, you need to live this way. If not, you're a bad person. Uh, and I'm going to prove it during this where I'm going to bring up several examples where I have not been humble. And I'm, this isn't one of these like 10 years ago, I wasn't humble, but now I am. Like, I'll give you an example from last week uh, where I wasn't humble. And and I think it's um, it's a back and forth battle that we lose awareness of. Example. Um, hey, that person's nice. I think I'm a nice person. I wasn't nice two nights ago uh, when I like snapped at Ashley about something stupid. That wasn't nice of me. So am I nice or uh, do I just have certain moments that I'm nice? Am I humble? Are you humble? Or you just have certain moments that you're humble? And I actually think I've read, read books on this. I read excerpts on it that I think there's a disconnect between what humility is and how it can impact you as a person, as an athlete, as a coach, as a gym owner, if, if for those of you out there, um, and I really like diving into it, and I like talking about it. I like reflecting on it uh, because it's a back and forth, up and down battle, especially with the era that we live in right now, with social media. You know, like um, you know, every now and then you make a post or say something, and it's like, oh, am I coming across a certain way? And then you don't want to, or you don't care, and then maybe others think about that a certain way. And you really can put yourself into this like tornado of thoughts and emotions that to me are just, it's a complete waste of time um, it, as long as you have this baseline humility about you. So I want to dive into it. And Sam, I didn't give a Sam warning about this. I'm going to give you no more than three sentences and it could be less. What is humility? That's a really good one. I would say the first thing I would say is being humble means not well think it's thinking not, of right. others before you think of yourself okay let me put it that way i like that because that's like the selfless approach right you're not selfish you're thinking about others and i my, my definition is right in line with that in that you're not better than anyone out there that's kind of like the way i would sum it up humility to me is you living not just saying it out loud like you living in a manner that as if you're not better than anyone you know, you don't deserve more than others, even though sometimes you do get some uh, more than others, um, you know, and that could be, again, I'm going to try to keep my best to keep this to CrossFit only. And if you want to go apply it to life, you can. Um, but how do we feel humility is viewed in this CrossFit space that we're in? And I think we look at others and call them humble or not humble much more often than we than we ever look inward and say, am I being humble? Am I not being humble? And wh why do we think that is, right? Like I have, I can list off 10 people in my head that I'm like, yeah, they don't have the humility trait <laughs> in, in their head. And I remember back to when Instagram started to being a, a thing. And Christian Harris, one of the best crossfitters in the world, looks amazing, um, has built a great business for himself, owns a gym, has a brand, he's got a lot of followers, and I remember him just like constantly posting these videos of himself working out. And I'll even, if you want to make, and he's like a CrossFit celebrity. And these guys, the guy's got sponsors left and right because of how he looks, right? Um, if, that's, if that's too fantasy to you, you don't know who he is, Dan Dodd, we've had here before. I remember he was one of the first guys that I've ever seen post videos of himself working out. And I remember judging him from the outside, someone that had, didn't have Instagram at the time. I was like, what a cocky mother effort. Like, why are you posting videos? And <laughs> last week, I'm personal training someone, and we're talking about social media, and she goes like, yeah, I, I hate when people post workout videos on themselves. It's so cocky. I'm like, oh, crap, I do that. <laughs> she, and she follows me on Instagram. 
So now it makes me start to think, do I have that perception, right? I post videos of my workouts a lot and I have my own reasons for them and I can get into them if you want. But we often will say this about others. That person is doing it because they're showing off. They're cocky. They're not humble. How often do we do this to ourselves? Am I being, do I lack humility by the way I talk about it, by the way I judge, all this stuff? Do you, in conversations that you have, because you're a talker, you have a lot of, you talk with a lot of different people, different perceptions, different relationships. Do you see what I'm saying there with, in regard to humility, that that kind of topic comes up a lot? Absolutely. It, and I think what you're touching on here is that people have different perceptions of others in terms of, of whether they think they're humble or not. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, if we look at our gym, we could each find someone who would say, yeah, Sam's not humble, right. or hey, yeah. Dave's not humble. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then we'd also have people who said, yeah, Dave is really a humble guy. Right. And it, it, it depends on what prism you're sort of looking at these people. It's like every figure. Like, it, if you asked 100 people, is Taylor Swift a humble person? Right. Like, I don't know, a bunch of them would say yes, and then a bunch of them would be like, no, nah, she's got a $40 million jet. She's not a humble person. What right. are you talking about? You know, so so it, I think the key is you can't really control what other people's perception mm -hmm. are of you. Right. And I am pretty sure that there are a lot of situations, and I'm sure you'll get into it, where what's perceived, what what is healthy self-esteem, what self-confidence, what's, mm -hmm. you know, self-assuredness at the gym, you know, whatever it is can be regarded as arrogance. Mm -hmm. And when it's, when that person is actually extremely humble when it comes to their performances at the gym and what they do. Right. Uh, I know some athletes here who think certain really great athletes are arrogant as F, but they're not. They just are really focused on their training and what they're doing. Dialed in. Okay. So- I think some of this is you could go down this rabbit hole of, am I humble? Am I doing enough? That's, you know, do I display enough humility? Hmm. I, I think some of this has to be your own perception of yourself and, and who you think you are. Mm -hmm. You can't always worry, like you said, about someone seeing what you do. Absolutely. And, and judging you for whether you truly are humble or not. So, and this whole topic that's really been in my head for a long time um, like I have expectations of myself and trying to live in a humble manner. And sometimes I fail, just like sometimes I fail to be nice, right? And sometimes I fail to be selfless. And, you know, bring up Dan Dot example. Dan, if you know Dan, Dan is very humble. He's a great dude. He's a great athlete, great coach, great husband, great father, great teacher. Like he, everything about him is is very humble. But before I knew him, all I saw was Instagram. Well, so you just watch his post. All he does is post yeah, him snatching videos. like five million pounds. Right. So you're like, is that a humble dude? Yeah. If you just looked at that post. Exactly. And if you don't know him, it's very easy. Like, I don't know Christian Harris. So like, you know, he's probably like, who the F is this guy from Bison talking about me? Like he hasn't ever had a conversation with my life. And this is where I check myself on trying to avoid judgment on people I don't know. That is a sign of humility because circle back to the definition of humility is I've never had a, at that point, I never had a conversation with Dan. At this point, I've never had a conversation with Christian Harris. So who am I to even open up that door? Uh, is this guy humble or not? Because if I am going to go down that path and say, hey, I've never asked this guy a question before. I've never had a conversation. Which of those two in that interaction is the one that lacks humility? It's me. Right. And so this is, and I really am trying to really learn more about it and live it in a way where it actually has changed me and how much I judge other people. You just kind of take them for what they are. And then it comes down to, you get to know them. Are they respectful? Do they put others before themselves? Like all that stuff. Like, but that can only happen as you get to know them. You're not going to get to know someone by scrolling through their Instagram. Correct. So that, that's an expectation I have of myself. What about expectation of others? What is my expectation of other people for them to contribute to this gym, right, to the CrossFit community as a whole out of humility? And it's a pretty simple concept to me. It has little, very little to do about you bragging or not, right? If you asked me what humility was five years ago, I'd be like, do they brag? Okay, they're not humble. No, no, that to me, that, that's kind of like just one part of humility to me. The, the, what I expect of others in regard to humility, whether you're an athlete, a coach, an owner, a bystander that comes into this gym, because remember, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I am telling you how to be in this gym, right? In terms of treating others, it's 
how much they avoid judging others without proper information. We've talked about that gossip episode that we've talked about, the culture episode that we've talked about, and right, how much do they like to highlight to others? And it doesn't have to be on social media. Like I really am trying to get away from the social media. It's just the one thing that always pops in my head. But when they show up to an open gym on a Sunday, are they talking about your score with you? Or are they talking about their own score with you? Hey, Sam, how was your workout? And you're like, well, I wrote a, a two or five. Pa- oh, I was a two minute pace. Uh, <laughs> did you, uh, did you, uh, did, hey, Sam, did you go uh, five and five on a deadlift? And you're like, well, look, I went singles, but what, what, what'd you do? Like that to me <laughs> is something that I always notice at the gym. Does every conversation turn into what you do? And I catch myself. I did this last week and I caught myself that I was asking someone about the dumbbell snatch and we were, also, we were talking about touch and go versus breaking them up. And right after they told me what they did, I told them what I did. And that's, that to me is a bad job. That lacks humility. You're there asking them the question about their workout. Like shut up about yourself. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, that is a good sign because I, I will, when people ask, yes, you're right. If someone uses a conversation for themselves, that's always a problem. Like that's a warning sign. It's a warning sign. Yeah. And and I don't really mind so much sometimes because sometimes someone really killed it. Yeah. And right. like and they're really proud of themselves. Right. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they had never gotten double unders before and they got like a hundred today. Yep. Like that's and it's be- awesome. And also I want to praise that with you. Yeah, yes. We do. And I'm also because I realize as my role as coach. That's my role here is to draw people out in terms of like, tell me about your performances. Right. Tell me what you're doing. Because I do want to know as a coach, mm-hmm. like if you hadn't had double unders and you got them this open, I want to know as a coach. So so I usually, so I don't, in in this situation, I don't actually worry so much about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do if they're like, hey, Sam, how'd you do on this? I did this. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I would rather you just come to me and say, hey, Sam, I got double unders this right. this this workout. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, mm. I was able to get like five rounds and I only was expecting to get three. Like, that's great. Yep. But if they ask you and then like flip it, yes, then I understand where they're coming from with it. Here's an example. It happened today. Rafi comes up to me and I was like, Rafi, didn't you do this already? He goes, yeah, yeah, I, I tried RX. Today I want to do the scaled. I was like, oh, okay. He goes, yeah, my double unders, I was just all over the place. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Like, you're, you're going to crush scale. Then he did. I think he absolutely crushed it today. As a coach and as someone that wants to make sure he's not feeling down on himself, which I'm sure he's not, I gave him my story from the Open in 2012, my first Open. I didn't have double unders. And the workout was uh, 30, 150 wall balls, 90 double unders, 30 ring muscle ups, AMRAP 14. And I got 150 wall balls done in under seven minutes. And then for the next seven minutes, I did 34 double unders. That was my score. Took me seven minutes to do three, and like, and I say that I bring up that story. And I'm like, hey, been there, right? And this is where I think it gets a little rough as a coach because you do want to give your examples, your past experiences to help them out. Like Rafi, that open workout yesterday, I bet that makes you get your double unders for next year because you don't want to have to sit something out because of the jump rope. And that's what because this X Y Z happened to me. Is that are should should a coach find different ways to? instill confidence, teach lessons, or is it okay to bring up personal experience in that regard? I think that probably is helpful sometimes. I think it depends on the person and the situation. Like, I think that that probably was positive for Rafi. Right. Uh, I think a lot of times I just, we're more like sounding boards Mm -hmm. where we're just kind of like hearing what they have to say. And And that's all they want. Yeah. They just want to have that ear and, and, had that understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was probably a very good anecdote, I would say, yeah. probably for for Rafi in that yeah. situation. Yeah, that, I, that's where an area I struggle with because I do. I have loads of stories. You know, does it change the story if I just change someone's name out and like, oh, I know someone that did this? You know, I would say it depends. Like, I try. My rule is I can only say an anecdote once a month. Okay. If I say it more than that, I know. Oh, my double unders. Oh my god, I remember when I did the right. like. That's not my like. I, I, if I do that, I notice I'm making it about myself. So I only, I'm allowed, I try to allow myself telling a story once a month. That's it. Coaches, when you are in class, whether you're stretching, warming up, you're at the whiteboard, how often, you should keep tabs on this. I've noticed this with some coachings in, in the past. How often are you talking about yourself? Are you talking about, and it could be your workout, it could be your life. 
You know, because to me, paying members are coming to your gym to be served, right? That's why they're here. They're not here to see you, by the way, coaches. They're here to be served. They're paying a membership for the services of the gym. Except for some of our coaches. Are really yeah, nice. oh yeah, no, we all love you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, I love our coaches. <laughs> I want to see them. Um, but they're here for the workout. They're here for the class. They're here for the community, right? And if, we, if, if we're going to constantly hear that coach talk about their lives rather than how are you doing, what's mm-hmm. up with you, that to me is like it's a red flag. Like if you constantly find yourself talking about your life, your stories, your your stresses, right? But you're not asking everyone else. Mm-hmm. That to me is like that's a that's a clear sign of, of lack of humility. Absolutely, as, from a coaching perspective. Good point. And there are coaches who do that. Yeah. I don't know so much here, but I have seen that very. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I remember seeing a celebrity coach. She's a games athlete, and she was coaching. She used to do this every time she coached a class. And this is not a huge deal. Again, don't know her, so I'm not going to judge her. All right. But I remember she used to take a selfie, a video selfie of the whole gym while they're doing the wad. And like from my perspective, like it's cool to do that every now and then. But if that's you're, if you're doing every class, like here's my 5 a.m., here's my 6 a.m., it's like this isn't about you. You know, it's about the class. And they're literally working out behind you with shitty form. You know, like that that could be a red flag to me in terms of humility and what you're actually truly there for. Mm. How does this relate to CrossFit performance? Okay. Will you – some people are – Again, you come here and you're allowed to be this way. I'm here for myself. I'm here to perform. I'm here to work out. I'm here to compete. I'm here to train. I have so many responsibilities outside the gym. Don't tell me how to be at the gym, Dave. I'm here for myself. And that is totally acceptable. I have a lot of those days. I wish I had more, to be honest with you. I wish I could come here and just like, shut up. I'm here to work out. I have headphones on. That means don't talk to me. All right. Your performance, in my opinion, can improve. You can become fitter if you if you think about humility throughout the workout, throughout the days, your before and after. From the sheer selfish standpoint that I think you're going to have more people in your corner if you live in a humble and act in a humble manner. And that kind of support can help really elevate you. And that's why I love this gym so much, you know, that I really feel like we raise each other up. Whether it's, hey, I did well in this workout, now that person's going to do well. Or it's, hey... I helped this person out with my lift. That's going to make that person want to help that person with the gymnastics. There's a, this kind of like we feed off each other type ethos here. And it, it, it does. It can come from humility, meaning you're putting others before yourself. Dave L said this to me one time. He goes like, it's contagious. That T said this to me last week. It's contagious. You like to act a certain way here. That like, hey, everyone here is really giving and supportive. I feel like I should be that way as well. And we all rise together for that because of that, that format. We have a lot of really good athletes that are that way, and and they do it in different ways. And I'm thinking of a couple different examples. I think of uh, Sean O'Hara. He yep. gives a he gives a crap load to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, shows up, brings whatever he's got. Mm-hmm. Um, also, is really working to help everyone else around him. He is a he's a touchstone at the gym. Mm-hmm. And then I think of someone who's different, like your brother Aaron. Shows up at five a.m extremely competitive like he get like he yep. really wants to kill the workout to yep. whatever extent he can whatever his score is whatever he does whether it's overhead squats yep. or row he's you know he'll do what he can and then he'll he'll leave and and sometimes it's the most amazing performance sometimes if it's overhead squat maybe not the most amazing performance but it doesn't matter he's not bragging when he does well he doesn't uh He's not quiet when he doesn't do well. Right. It's it's always the same. Yep. It would be what you would expect for a pastor, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Uh and but but it's not that he's not like it's humility, but it's coupled with not like aw shucks, like I'm not gonna do well or whatever. No. He brings it. Yeah. And if I was like next to him and if I was competing next to him, I know he would do everything he could to outperform me because He's got that competitive fire, but he's not a, but he's very humble, very humble when it comes to it. So, so there are different ways of sort of expressing it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think of people who have health issues. I just, I was thinking of someone who just, um, uh, just had surgery, probably one of the most humble guys that we have here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I've been thinking about him a lot and, and his recovery and, and he, I just you know, just think that there are a lot of people, you never know what they're going through. They, they're they just super positive people at the gym, whether they're high or low. Mm-hmm. And and you would never know um, anything else about them other than they're just 
they just bring a great presence to the gym. Yeah, great vibe. Yeah. You know, the, the most of our gym is interpersonal interactions, right? People interacting with each other. Very rarely you come to this gym and not interacting with someone in, in some manner, right? The people that bother me sometimes are the ones who come up and they're like, oh, okay, so for this workout, and I saw someone do this, you have to break up the deadlifts. Yeah. You must do that. Four, three, three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, where are you coming off telling this person that you have you have to do anything? Right. Like unless they ask. Right. E even as a coach, I never tell anyone what to do. I ask them, Yeah, what are you planning on doing for this? Okay. And then I hear what they have to say. And then if they ask, I'm like Listen okay. first, talk second. Yeah. And I'm yeah. always like, Okay, and your plan why did you plan that? Mm -hmm. If it sounds good, I'm good for it. I yeah. I'm never going to sit there and be like, you must go unbroken on this mm -hmm. unless unless I really know them. And this is something that, you know, we've talked about many times before. Right. I want to hear what they have to say first. Mm -hmm. I am not perfect by any means as a coach. And I think if you throw someone off their strategy, you could like you could mess them up. Like, what's the big deal breaking it up five and five versus like going unbroken? I mean, yeah. come on, you know. So so I do see people who are. They, I, again, I'm not trying to judge, but they are not necessarily showing signs of humility when they talk to me. Right, yeah. And it, it, it's like one of those little things like, oh, God, Dave and Sam, you're a little overreacting to something simple like that. Like someone's literally trying to help. And that that's where I think our perception of what help is is not real help. Like you might be wrong. Like you might be going up to someone and like you shouting out a 4-3-3 ref scheme to them might be like, dude, we what? Like my coach just told me this or I was thinking about this. Your intentions are fine, but humility is not just about intentions. Humility is about, again, you're not always going to be right. What you think, what you say is not always right. And the timing and the way you say it, like, you know, if I ask someone like, hey, what, what, what was your body language and your tone of your voice like when you said that? I guarantee most people are like, I don't know. I just said it. I'm like, do you understand like the nonverbal non interactions with people actually mean a lot more than just your words? So true. So, like, if you're not present with that idea, like, you might be screwing them up. Yes, clap, clap, you're trying to help, but you're not. And, and, it's an, and like, a lack of humility is you don't, you're not aware that it's, it's like, really a lack of self-awareness that you're not helping. Yeah. Um, coachability, th this for, from the athlete's perspective, all right? I'm going to give an example where I lacked humility. Um, I've shared this before, uh, so I hope no one remembers so I, I can act like it's new. Uh, the first year I had to coach Toronto. Uh, it was an open workout that we might actually see as a repeat this upcoming week. And thrusters, toes of bar, front squats, thrusters, chest of bar, front squats, thrusters, muscle ups, front squats, and then a max lift after mm -hmm. of clean, hang clean, squat, or deadlift, whatever. It was a really nasty, I actually think it was one of the top five hardest open workouts ever. I was in shambles. I did really poorly um, compared to what my capacity was at the time. Um, I didn't miss... I, I don't think I mispaced it. I just did poorly. And I sent my coach my score. And I was like, man, like we both were like, you should be finishing this in X amount of time. And I wasn't even close. I got capped out, I think. And he goes, did you do my warm up? I was like, no, I, I didn't do the warm up. I was actually, I did it Thursday night with the whole gym. So I was getting people's like zones taped up and uh, I was getting the heat set up. I was setting up judges and like, you know, my intentions were what? They were nice. I'm trying to help people out at the gym. I'm a gym owner. I'm a coach. You guys get lined up. I'll go. I skip the entire warm up. And he goes, "Don't ever not do a warm up again that I program for you, or I'll, I'll, or just tell me and I'll stop programming for you." And that to me was a lack of humility, where my coach put in time and effort for my plan to get me to my highest result. And I literally stepped on top of it, squished it with my shoe, and said, screw it. I'm on my own. I'm good. I coach CrossFit. I'm a competitor. All right? I'm going to go do this myself. And that is a lack of humility, that we can come up with reasons in our heads why I didn't do it. And they might be justified from the outside. But I put myself, my opinion, in front of the coach that I was paying. That, to me, was like, that was the last time I did that, too. Because that was like, that is not coachable. And I can experience, I can, I can, um, I can empathize with that from a coach. Like you, there's a lot of things you do, whether it's programming and they, they don't do it or they get, you give them a suggestion, they don't do it, that you tell them to slow down and work on pacing, they don't do it. Hey, come in and work on your engine, they don't do it. And they come back like, why am I not getting the results in my head? I'm like, that is the answer. 
and you take that as, as, as disrespect. What do you think about that? That is so true. I would say from both sides. As a coach, you had better make sure what you ask of your athletes is real. Like, don't program a warm-up. Don't program whatever, you know, don't give strategies or tips if they're not really things that you truly believe in. Mm -hmm. And in return, the athletes should follow or try to follow what you're coaching to the best of their ability. And I've seen it kind of break down both ways where the coach isn't really sort of putting the most effort they could into whatever it is that they're coaching for that class. Mm -hmm. And the and the athletes sort of realize it, and so they're just kind of half-assing it. Um, on the other end, then the athletes are not taking what the coach is really sort of trying to help them with, and they're just kind of letting it go on their own. And mm -hmm. and I, I've done that. I've, I, I've sat there literally a couple weeks ago and being like, this is a, a stupid warm-up. I don't want to do it. I'll do, you know, I won't do it or I'll run to, like, I've seen athletes run to the bathroom. Uh, we, we have athletes every freaking <laughs> class who don't do what we ask them to do, almost right. intentionally. I'm yeah. thinking of one person in general, <laughs> in specifically, and uh, with whom I won't call out. But, but you're right. Like, give it a chance mm. both ways. Relinquish control. Yes. Yeah. You might actually learn something you right. might actually be like oh this was a good warm-up oh this is great like i know like listen maybe you're like oh this is too busy there's just too much stuff here right give it a shot yeah and and then measure the actions athletes right oh this this warm-up's too much i or i don't have enough time i'm like well just saw you talking to someone for two three minutes about something completely unrelated just talk to them after class i'm not telling you not to talk to them this place is Social interaction. I will say I do that with you sometimes because you like to really warm people up. Yeah. And I, I got to admit, like, you'll be like, all right, why don't you do a whole round before the workout? I've gotten better at saying, hey, option one, option two. Right. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't want to do a whole round. That's going to really tire me out. <laughs> but so I have to admit, I, I am guilty of that as well. Yep. Um, now that you talk about it, I'm going to try to do better. Right. And- if there is an honest, like, Dave, this is too much, you could say that to a coach, and a, a coach needs what to adjust? Feedback. Humility. Yeah. That coach needs to be like, you know what? Um, you know what? I programmed a warm-up for all the classes, my classes, on 24.1, and it was it was kind of, like, similar to what I did. If you remember when I was warming up for that, like, I went after it and got oh myself my God. tired. I was like, wow, you, yeah. you look like you were doing the workout, and I just, I'm a very strong believer that it helps you do the workout as long as it's not too close to the, your actual start time. And someone came up to me he's like, I can't do all that. And, you know, coach needs to be humble enough to be like, you know what, maybe you're right. How about to cut the reps in half? You know, be flexible coaches because your rules are not going to be applying. They, they can't work for everyone. Mm. Um, so your view of self and in parentheses level of importance, all right, and removing the outside life to that because I'm, again I'm still talking about the gym and I have um, we, we have a COO of a huge company that's in our gym and I think very few people know that he's a COO um, I didn't know until uh, yeah recently and he's been here for years like of it, it, seven eight years and I didn't know until like two years ago and to me that's kind of cool that's humility to me yeah like, you have like a big swinging you know what in here and yeah. he's and you're like wait you wow um, and so he's very important, Pro probably does very well. Right. And a lot of people in the gym do very well. And I love that. And he's very confident. I'm sure he is. He should be. He's earned a lot that it doesn't affect who he is in this gym. That to me is also a sign of humility because this can be tough. Let's say you're a big boss somewhere. You have a lot of responsibility, very wealthy. A lot of people report to, oh, I, uh, 500 people report to me, that kind of thing. Maybe even more. Right. Maybe I own this. I've had these businesses. Right. My kids are this like we're just a successful everywhere here. It doesn't really matter. And I think it takes a certain breed of person to come in here and be like, all right, even though I am this person outside this gym, I'm still the person that's going to come in, look at the whiteboard and I'm going to go to the actual zone that tells me the, that the coach tells me to do. I'm going to use this barbell. I'm going to do these heats. I'm going to judge this person, even though I don't want to. That is a really cool humility trait that I've seen in this gym so many times. And I think it's something that you can really, 
you know, build the community up through that, that even though you're a big deal here, when you come in the walls, you're no different than the person that signed up last week, other than you have a bigger responsibility to be nice to that person. That's so important. I think I don't try to find out what people do outside the gym because I don't want that to affect who everyone is within the gym. And you're right. We have some big shots yeah, that come do. in. And I remember one big shot at the old gym. He was like one of the wealthiest dudes. He was like some big finance dude who like retired. He had hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't hack it at the gym, not because he wasn't, you know, particularly fit or whatever. Like we all start not super fit sometimes, right. but because he kind of expected treatment mm -hmm. that befitted his status outside the gym. Mm -hmm. And I could tell because someone knew who he was and and sort of made a little joke or like sort of mentioned it and he kind of puffed up a little bit. <laughs> and it's like, dude, it's not about how big your wallet is outside the gym at all. Yeah. Like it's not gonna help you. Nobody either. cares. Yeah. You're you are a beginner right. and you have a lot to learn if you're gonna stay here at this gym. And he couldn't hack it. He left. And 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 that's the kind of thing that I can tell if someone tries to bring their outside status in, that's gonna be a problem. And that lacks humility. And I'm telling you right now, that guy that you're thinking about, if he stuck with it and and he checked his own ego at the door and was humble when he came in. I guarantee because he probably has some sort of mental traits in him that will get him and understand the long game that could have made him the fittest he's ever been. I mean, who knows where he is right now? Right. Right. But if he stayed here and had that humble check in him that even though you're great out there, it just doesn't matter when you're in here, he probably could have eventually elevated himself to a really high level of health and fitness. And it's because of humility he didn't get there. So you guys that are listening, right? He's probably not. Um, <laughs> no, probably not. Um, you guys that are listening right now, do you hold yourself back at all? Do you think that because of um, your success or status outside the gym, you, you deserve to be treated a certain way or you have certain expectations of CrossFit workout program in general that are just not true? Is that holding you back from... Dumbing yourself down to the fundamentals. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes you do need to scale workouts. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes that chick is going to lift more than you. And if you can't handle that, I'm telling you right now, you will not get what you can out of CrossFit. It, it like That happens all the time where new guys come in that are fit, they work out, they're good athletes, and Sabrina's lifting next to them. <laughs> or any of those 6 a.m. girls. Yeah. They're squatting more than, than this guy. This is like, dude... You can tell the level of discomfort in someone that lacks humility rather than just like, hey, trust me, as the coach, I go, I make it a point to tell guys, I was like, everyone in this gym will lift more than you. Trust me, it's not because you're not fit. You just don't know what you're doing yet or your range of motion is not there. And it, it's a hard pill to swallow. But if you swallow it, your fitness is going to be elevated to a higher level. What about athletes that are really good and they come in and they expect a certain level of status in here because they're good in here. Let's let's take away, hey, I'm successful outside the gym. No longer care about that. I'm in here and there's going to be two parts to this. Let's start off with the good athlete side. I'm really good. I made these qualifiers. I did these competitions. I deserve this. I deserve this lane. I deserve this pull-up bar. I deserve this box. I deserve this wall ball space. I deserve this barbell. Um, I deserve to be next to this person. I deserve to pick my judge. Do you see that without shitting on anyone? Do you see that? And is there something that we can do as a community? Maybe you're the person that's the problem. Is there something you could do to check yourself that you're not being that person? It's a really good question. I've seen drop-ins who've come in. Drop-ins are a problem. Yeah, who are really excellent athletes mm -hmm. and they want to show everybody that they are awesome CrossFit athletes. Mm -hmm. Then I've seen some who were awesome CrossFit athletes and yet they were more low key about it. And yeah. it, it Lived right in. Yeah. They were just like, oh, I'm a guest at your yep. gym. So yep. just, you know, fit me in wherever. Let me yep. do whatever. Yep. Uh, seen it both ways. Yeah. Uh, th th that that's a it's a red flag when someone comes in. They're like, I'm good at CrossFit. Right. Like, I'm going to, you know, sh show me respect. Right. Like I, like saying that you need to be treated a certain way because you're a certain level of athlete um, is rough. And it, it really again, think about it from the CrossFit community perspective. Right. Um, 
you're a really high level athlete, that's awesome. It's not going to do anything for the gym. So you, you're not going to get special treatment. Now, when qualifiers come around, this is rough for me. All right. We're going to have 60 people qualify, I think. That many? 50 to 60. Woo. Um, we'll see. I might be wrong. Uh, I just think it's going to be around there. And I think a few won't do it. And this this is something I'm going to put out to the whole crowd, so I don't mind saying this right now. Some people are going to need to video their workouts. Uh, like the full setup. Like everything. And it's the worst part of competing online. And I am not going to decide who's videoing and who's not. I am going to put that out there, message out there. If you want to video, go ahead. If you think you have a shot at semifinals, you go ahead. If you're going to ask me for my opinion, I'll give you some numbers, but honestly, just don't know either because it's based on programming. Um, and if it's a goal of yours, you know what? You should probably practice videoing because it's a skill. It's a part of competing online. If you are, don't have it, are you going to video your workouts? I am. Okay. All right. And does that, there's going to be people in the gym that need, we had to do this last year with a few people that were videoing that we had to give them like their own little section mm. because if you put them in a certain section of the gym, other people are walking back and forth. The view is not good. That right. You could get DQ'd because of that. Right, right. So that's where athlete perception is, wow, we're giving special treatment to, like, I'll say her name right now. Amy's going to have to video her workouts. There are a couple others, too. She's going to be, yeah. There's There might be a dozen, to be honest with you. And if she needs, like, if there's handstand walks, she's going to have to have an entire side of the gym. Mm. And it's going to be rough to plan around. And there's going to be others that need it as well. So I'll admit this out loud. I plan around them first. The people that need the video, not because they're better, but because of what they need. Yeah. And that is going to challenge a lot of athletes in the gym that are not videoing, that still need to get the workouts in. They are just as important that this doesn't turn into she's getting special treatment. She can take my space. I can't do handstand <laughs> walks. So don't even set up that space for me. And but, I'm not videoing anything either. But those are... That's a really key example of your view of yourself and why you're doing quarterfinals. You want to be a part of it. It's fun. I just want to have fun. And her view is like, I have a shot at semifinals. She's not a shoe in right? But she's got a shot. I think she's probably top 30 in the world right now after this workout. And so she definitely has a shot um, at, at reaching that level. And we need to plan around that. And um, But at the same time, I'll even challenge us, and Amy has no problem with this, so I can say this. She should not walk in and be like, call the shots, right? She's going to trust that I'm going to take care of it. So she'll be taken care of. She, but she should not walk in and start directing traffic and be like, because she can kill her perception to others. And she could also not act in a humble manner by telling people what to do. Because that's not her place. She doesn't own the gym. She's not the coach. See, that? that's where when you're a competitive athlete, and this is where I understand it as well, People are going to look at you and, and think, yep. that's not a humble person. Yep. But that's not what that's not what it is. Competitive athletes. I think the person that's saying that is the one that lacks humility. Th that may be true because, like, you're going to need the same setup. Yep. You're going to need all that space. Yep. And, you, and listen, as a gym, if we have people who have aspirations to get to that next level, mm -hmm. we should support We them. have to. I mean- and it's more than just what I would need as someone who squeaks into quarterfinals. Let's face it. Mm -hmm. These people have very high level ambitions and we should support that as a gym, as coaches, yeah. as members. I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. When you look at any high level athlete, like I, I don't want to compare it to like a Kobe Bryant right. or a Michael Jordan or any of these people. But listen, that focus that you need mm -hmm. in order to perform, and I've seen it on every level, even at high school. Listen, Matt Frazier. Yeah, look at high school athletics. I bet you guys all know a bunch of high-level high school athletes. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? They're zoned in and focused on their performance. That's not a lack of humility. Mm -hmm. That's performance focus. Yeah. And that's, that's a difference. The highest-level performers are usually, you have to be selfish by nature. <laughs> By definition, you, you are to, you are focused on yourself, which yeah. I guess means you are selfish. Yeah, but and that but selfish is not a bad thing in that in that environment. That's not that's not what it is at all. And this is where I think gym owners and coaches and the community as a whole needs to be present with this fact that when quarterfinals comes around and certain people need certain things, um, there needs to be no extra thought about it. It's just like, oh, that's what she needs. All right, she's there. That's what he needs. He's he's there. Like, and that's the end of the discussion. There's no texting. There's no whispers. That's just what they need. Um, if someone comes in the middle of July 
and says like, hey, I'm the best athlete in the gym. I get to be by the door for the running workout. Then that's a problem, right? That That's not what we're talking about. All right. Um, last thing, and then we'll kind of just get wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Social media and humility. I don't want to do another social media episode, um, but- in regard to yourself, with your social media, all right, and are you acting, again, projecting humility is not going to work because different people perceive humility as different things. People, Some people know you, some people don't. I say you keep that out of your head. But in your heart of hearts, when you are making a post, I always say, if you have your own social media, you really, it's your platform, you are allowed to do whatever you want, nobody else should judge it. The only judgment you can give is whether or not you follow that person. Right. Or, or like whatever they put out there. That's right. Right? And that, that I wish you could just end at that. Um, for those that struggle with, are people going to think a certain way if I do this video, if I post this, if I post this message about this video? Um, I think in your heart of hearts, you need to, and if humility is a goal of yours and you want to be perceived as a humble person, you need to have a really strong, confident answer of why you're making a post like that. And you don't need to tell to anyone. You don't need to justify to anyone. Um, you know, you, you get these posts all the time. So I never post about my workout, but here's a post about my workout. So like, <laughs> that's a, a clear like sign. You're struggling with this. You don't want people to certain, so uh, you don't want people to think a certain way about you. And I've done that before. I'll admit that. Um, anytime I make a post, it, it's like, all right, am I, am I sending the message I want to? And could this make me look a certain way? And I've gotten over it the more I do it that, I have my reasons for every single post. Like everything I do has thought behind it. You might like it, you might not. Don't care about that. But if you are in this struggle bus, ask if you're trying to make that word thirst trap again. Are you just trying to impress other people? That is where I think there's a a problem with with your own social media. And if you want to take me that as being judgmental, I'm not. I, it's more of me saying you sh I'm looking out for you and you should look out for yourself that if every intention you have is, I hope this person sees this, so they look at me and they think that. That's where I think our, our world, our society in general, especially with the kids now, mm -hmm. it causes a lot of long-term problems. I would say you're absolutely right. What is the intent? If you are posting, what is your intent? Right. I know what my intent is when I post nowadays. Yep. It's usually for one person. Mm -hmm. Like, I have in mind one person. Usually okay. it's for... Honestly, it's either for my, it's usually for yeah, my kids. Yeah, usually like, with your, your kids. Yeah, it's usually with Sasha or Nick. And yep. the reason being is I want them to know I support them. Yep. I want them to know that I love them and yep. I want them to know I'm proud of them and that I like being with them. And, and that's their platform. That's and that's how they platforms. That's how they see it. Right. So if I never posted anything with Sasha or Nicholas, they'd be like, do they love, does he love yeah, me? Like right. that's really how they kind of judge it. Right, right. And whether that's right or wrong is not part of the discussion. It, that's just the way it it's is. It's just the form. Or the way you perceive it. It's just the form. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I sort of think of it. And yeah. so um, I understand if I just sent it to them, it wouldn't mean It's not a public much. display. Right. So, so I understand that I'm sending it to everyone that knows me, but it's really not for you and it's not for Ash or it's not for anyone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy for you guys to see it. Absolutely, I like seeing them. Right, so but I do. It, it's really, it's really for them, mm -hmm. and and I and that's it. Like, I have no desire otherwise. Un, uh, you know what? No. A the other reason is is sometimes I like lifting up other people. Like yes. that's why I always post, for example, uh, about the Ohio State Michigan game yep. with Kayla. Yeah. <clears throat> because I freaking love Kayla. Yeah, <clears throat> and Kayla's the best. And yeah. so I love you know highlighting that or whatever it is. Like yep. if. If there's something that uh, I do with someone that I feel like they need to be highlighted and lifted up, that's that's why I do it. I I don't. I used to care more about what people thought of me or 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 how I do. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm just old and tired at this point, but I don't I don't care. I think we all go through phases of it. Like I, I do think there's a, a curve. Yeah, where you really do start to care. It peaks, and at some point, you're just like it doesn't fill the cup. Right. Like it did, like you thought it would, or you're just like, I'm no longer even just thinking about it. So as a producer, right. that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm of a different generation. Like right. my kids, and I understand their perspective as producers of, of social media, very different. Very different.
So to wrap this up, what are, what are a few things we can do to check ourselves just in time? Because like I said, it, it's no different than, you know, being nice or being a good driver. You know, like you're a good driver some days and sometimes you, you mess that up, right? Sometimes you send a text message while you're driving and someone honked at you. Like, you know, it, it's you go back and forth with these like, are you always humble? Probably not. Are you always not humble? Probably not. All right. But I think there are things you can do to self-check. And these are things I have on myself. I've written down. Mm -hmm. Okay. My actions, my words, and what do I do out loud? Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, I mean, it's pretty simple. My actions and words can project um, humility. Um, but the out loud stuff, I've always, I do t judge people humility based on how often they out loud say I was wrong or how often they say sorry or how often they say thank you. Those are three things. I'm sorry, I was wrong, and thank you. And that that's something I always want to make sure I do. Um, like when we have coaches meetings, I always want our coaches, I do care about what my co our coaches think about me. I do. From a humility perspective. I want them to know and think that I'm humble. Um, in that I'm not above them. You, know, you can say, oh, he's the boss, he's the head coach, he's the owner. I still want always then all of our coaches to be like, hey, Dave does not project himself that he's just bossing us around, even though it gets tough because there are times you have to say, you got to do this, you do that, right? Where I will in meetings a lot tell um, coaches what I do wrong. And I'll say sorry to coaches when I screw something up. Because to me, that that is a, a, a public, sometimes hard thing to do to say I'm wrong and I screwed this up. Where I do know people that I like a lot, they never say sorry out loud, ever. And that to me is a huge deal. Thoughts on on that? Without, again, not criticizing, it's like, check yourself. How often do you say thank you? How often do you say sorry? How often do you say I was wrong? You should always be saying thank you. If yeah. you don't have gratitude for others, mm -hmm. you're lacking humility on that. Yeah, and you, and you think you deserve it. Yeah. And you don't. The second thing is, and this is a fine line. There is a difference between being stubborn and being arrogant. Yeah. So I am very stubborn. You can be very <laughs> stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean neither of us aren't humble. Mm -hmm. Like if you truly believe in something Absolutely. and you stick to your guns, yeah. like sometimes things don't go well because you believe in something and you carry it out, you might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Whether you say you're wrong or not, th th it depends on the situation. It's up right. for debate. I'm not saying every time there's a disagreement. Right, right. Event. But I would say this. I would say <clears throat> humility and clarity of belief are are not mutually incompatible. You can you can truly believe in something strongly, disagree with others, stick to your plan, do what you want to do, and yet still be humble if it doesn't all work out. Yes. If if you're willing to to learn from your mistakes, right. understand that what you do may not always work out mm -hmm. and that you're willing to reflect and 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 take guidance from others sometimes in mm -hmm. in the right situation. So I I feel like that 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 and I think you can also have clarity of belief and yet still appreciate and be non-judgmental. So we we have disagreements all the time like the whole Glassman thing, for yep, example. Yep, yep. Disagreed about like what to do about disaffiliating yep. and all that, and you were you were stubborn, I was stubborn, but but we both appreciated and respected each other's choices and thoughts and opinions about. Stuff. I talk about that disagreement with you with a lot of people in a positive manner. Yes, and because there are few people, very few, where I can we can <laughs> we yell at each other and still feel like there's like a very mutual respect. Like usually for me. You know, and the, maybe this lacking humility. I get into a fight with you like that, like I'll just cross you off, like I'm I'm out. But the next day we're talking about it again, and we talk about it, we, we meet in person, all that stuff. And that to me, like, I think it's a sign of your of your of your humility that we can disagree like that. We can literally yell at each other, and still understand that there's a mutual respect for the other side. That we just have to agree to disagree on some things. That's that's exactly right. Like we mutually we respect each other's opinions. Mm. We can be stubborn about what we believe in, but we also appreciate where that other person's coming from. And that is a sign of humility is yep. being able to understand that without, like you said, crossing that person off. And and, and that's important. To, you know, again, gonna try to keep this a CrossFit and we're almost done. I promise. <laughs> 
But I think the biggest issues in our world right now are maybe our country are just political differences. And that to me, whether it's the news, which is just obvious what's what they're going on, just going off for clicks, right? And get attention. But when you see people argue with each other about politics, my number one thought always circles back to like all these people lack humility. Like, like they just can't fathom accepting a disagreement. Like you're going to disagree on a lot of different things. And to me, the fact that you're going to really belittle someone or look down on someone because you don't agree with lifestyle situations like that right there, red flag, lack of humility. And that's why I feel very strongly about it. I reflect on this all the time so since COVID and I have a son. What's the world going to be like in 20 years, right? I think the biggest issue is people lacking humility. I really do. I try to look at everybody's posts online, whether they're posting about their workout, right. how they are, a quote. Yep. We have a lot of people who post a lot at the gym. They do. Maybe it's their family, everything. I I try to love everything that everyone posts because it's an expression of themselves yeah. on some level. Right. And we're all at different stages of our lives. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the 50th workout post I've seen from you, whether it's the 50th in inspirational quote that I've seen from you, yeah. whether it's the 50th baby, you know, picture I've seen from you. Yeah. I love it all yeah. because you know what? It's you. Right. I'm okay with that. Right. I have, I really try not to judge. And I, I feel like if you're that person who's like, Man, again, why are you keep posting about the, your baby? We know you have a freaking baby. We all got babies. You're not in a good place. We know it was your kid's first day of school. Right. right. You're not in a good place if yeah. that's how you're reacting to people's yeah. social media. And it lacks humility. It, you're lacking humility because yeah. it's like, you know what? They're expressing themselves. Yeah. What is it to you? A zero. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Like it. Like yeah. you said, if if it really triggers you, yeah. unfollow. Very simple. <laughs> Thoughts on others because this, this circles us to the last thing. Uh, thoughts on others. And again, how can I self-check humility? That's what I'm, that's what we're wrapping this up with because I think we should all be, always have the wheel spinning, all right? Judgment, what we just said, jumping to conclusions and asking questions. Those are the things that I think can really check your humility um, from an outward perspective, right? So we just talked about judging and, and then, you know, trying to avoid that. Jumping to conclusions, right? Um and if you don't ask someone questions, like the actual direct source of who you're thinking about, you you really bring up that Christian Harris example, Dan Dodd example, when I didn't know Dan Dodd. I had never asked him a question before, like, why do you do this? And I don't think anything's wrong. If someone comes up to me on a random Wednesday in, in May and says, hey, why do you why do you post your workouts videos sometimes? My mom has asked me before. She goes, why do you do that? And why does your shirt off? <laughs> <laughs> That's so mom. <laughs> and, um, and, Th those are like, I like those conversations and let the person explain themselves. And then maybe from there, like, all right, it's kind of like a shitty answer, <laughs> like, see you later, like that kind of thing. And you just don't associate with them anymore. But if you ever find yourself making a lot of these judgments and you don't have the information available to have a credible judgment because you never ask questions, you know, we have a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm good at reading people. <laughs> you get that? Qu uh, a lot of people say that. And I, I think most people are not good at it. And Really, what you're saying is like you just thought about your own thoughts and now you have like this big dramatic opinion on something. So and that to me, that's like that lacks humility. Like if you really want to get to know a situation or find out what's going on with someone, ask the direct source questions, because to me. When you ask an athlete about their open strategy, that's humility. What are you going to do? What's your plan? And if they ask you like, hey, Sam, what do you think? Then give it to them. But if you're going to go to him like four three three, break up the double unders and row at two fifteen pace, you're not asking questions. You're just thinking about your own thoughts, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's something we can all check ourselves on. Are you asking like I'm a huge fan? Ask people questions, generate discussion, and then you can go from there. I can't think of a better way to finish that off. Yeah, that that's a that's probably the one takeaway I would I would take away from this. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Um, I hope your life just changed. Listen to the <laughs> the episode on humility on the Herfit podcast. But all seriousness, I think um, if we all can just self-check like the way we just wrapped it up, I think the gym's better tomorrow. Like literally tomorrow. I think if and if if you ever lose track of things or you find that you're in a bad place, judging people, you're angry all the time, scrolling through your phone, all that kind of stuff, circle back to this episode and I bet you can find at least part of the solution here. Um, to A, make yourself better, and B, make the gym better. Thank you. See you next week. 
Thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.